What's up, Dragon Slayers? Today's video is about how ethnicity affects insulin resistance. In interestingly, certain ethnicities can carry multiple specific genetic traits and tend to have an increased likelihood of becoming insulin resistant. One notable study compared the insulin sensitivity, among other things, of four prominent ethnicities in the United States, Hispanics, Asians, Africans, Americans, uh, and Caucasians, which might more accurately be defined as Northern European descent. Despite having roughly similar body weights, waist to hip ratios along all the groups, uh, the most insulin resistant group was Hispanic Americans. The next most insulin resistant group was Asian Americans, which is interesting because they also were the group with the lowest body weight and the lowest waist to hip ratio. African Americans were third most insulin resistant group with Caucasians being the least insulin resistant group. In most groups, obesity and waist to hip ratio are very highly correlated with insulin resistance. And this is what we'd expect. However, the Asian group seems to not play by the same rules. This group had the lowest waist to hip ratio and lowest BMIs, and yet were surprisingly more likely to be insulin resistant. We'll, lean it, we'll learn more about waist to hip ratio in a later video. But this study did not include other ethnicities that weren't mentioning, namely the Pima Indians and indigenous American people who generally lived in Southern Arizona. This group has the highest prevalence of insulin resistance of any group in America. Insulin resistance is such a problem among this group that children as young as four years old have been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. The remarkably common observation of insulin resistance among the Prima and other Native Americans led to the 1980s to a now famous theory known as the thrifty genotype. Genotype is the scientific term that simply means the genes that we have. The theory was touted in an effort to understand why some people, like Native Americans, have such a pronounced collective risk of insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. At its foundation, the theory is built on the idea that because of repeated cycles of feast or famine periods, times when food was sparse, punctuated by brief moments of plenty, people developed uh, the inability to efficiently store energy form it basically as fat. Um, this would allow a person to have energy to use during the times when food is insufficient and the high insulin levels that, are, that go along with insulin resistance signal to the body to store energy. However, this theory is by no means proven and has been repeatedly challenged. As a counterpoint, consider people who have high rates of insulin resistance, yet have likely never experienced feast or famine cycles because of their location. A perfect example of this would be the Pacific Islanders, Islanders, um, some of whom have the absolute highest rates of insulin resistance in the world, despite living in a climate and location that provides ample edible vegetation and fish year round. This phenomenon among Pacific Islanders led researchers to wonder if insulin resistance among certain populations has less to do with their genes being prone to storing fat than it does to their becoming adapted to certain foods. This alternative theory is built on the very real facts that insulin resistance is becoming increasingly common among people who have been exposed more recently to a Western diet. Insulin resistance is relatively lower among people of European descent, though it has certainly increased over time. Thus, the theory would suggest that while those of European descent have had more time to adapt to the foods that can raise insulin and lead to diabetes, Populations that were exposed to these foods more recently 
within the last hundred years or so are suffering the consequences more dramatically. A comparison within the various populations reveals that people who have immigrated and adopted a Western diet invariably have higher rates of insulin resistance than their counterparts of in their countries of origin following a more traditional lifestyle and diet. Thankfully, as complicated as the genetic insulin resistance web may be, understanding how age impacts insulin resistance is a little clearer, albeit similarly frustrating. As futile as it is to try to stay young, understanding how age and insulin resistance connect can give us an edge in combating insulin resistance as we grow older. So that's what I've got for you guys today. Don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps the channel out. And remember, guys, that together, you and I will slay the dreaded diabetes dragon.